Hello. Hi. Hi, Radina. Hi, Sana. Hi, Hi everybody. Hello, Sah. Hi. Good to see you. Hi, Hi Sana. Hi, Muhammad. Hi, Nada. Are you there? Hello. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you all for showing up. This is really nice for me to be able to share this with you. So the purpose of today is to thank you, to thank all my clients who are attending, because the last 30 years for me have been really so enriching because of you. I learned so much from your life journeys. It allowed me to see what's happening worldwide to us humans. It allowed me to see the little trends, the macro trends, the micro trends. And because, as you know, this year has been so important for me because the last four were absolutely tough and miserable. And then suddenly it appeared to me that everything is coming together after all this hard work. And I spent most of the second half of last year writing those books. And this year it hit me. It was the 30th anniversary. My dream, which is to write and publish my books, have been happening. And I thought I really owe it to my clients Many of those have stuck with me for more than 25 years. So there we are. Tonight is a celebration of that to give something back to you. So it's your hour. We'll be together for an hour. Any question, anything, any problem, anything you're facing, I am ready. But to begin with, I'd like to do a very short meditation because you're all very different. I recognize all of you and we need to kind of stabilize the energy. So if I may ask you, just go into your silence. And can we tell you happy birthday? Oh, thank you. Michelle, November. <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned happy birthday in the thing or something. My yeah, body. November. So that's why we're doing it up to October. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But thank you. Thank yes. you very much. So to me, I feel I've already started celebrating, which is really great. Amazing. Okay. So is everyone okay if we do a short meditation? All right, so let's go into your silence. Just close your eyes, focus inside. And I want you to imagine or pretend that with your own eyes, you're looking inwards and you're scanning yourself very quickly. Make sure all of you is here. Take a deep breath in, really deep. And hold it in as long as you can. When you feel you can no longer hold it, let it go and keep your eyes closed. Excellent. Now I want you to imagine or pretend that there is a line of light running from the bottom of your spine, up your spine, out of your head and all the way to the highest star. It says hello to the highest star and the star sends you a beam of white light very quickly down the same line into your head, into your spine, out of your spine, all the way down to the center of the earth through the floor, through the crust, right down to the center of the earth and out of the center of the earth and all the way down. So you are centered and sitting in the middle of the universe. Good. And now I want you to imagine or pretend that you're sitting in a sphere of lapis lazuli, navy blue sphere. All you hear is silence, nothing to think about or visualize. You can see a starry night above you, whatever you need to imagine. It's a safe place to neutralize and focus your energy. And just listen to any sounds you can observe in your room where you are. And just give me two minutes to do this. Excellent. So when you're ready, you can think of your toes, wiggle your toes, remember the room that you're in, and open your eyes when you're ready. Just out of curiosity, did anyone feel anything? 
I wasn't looking at you. I was more focusing mentally, but I think you've all done it. I felt Nada was hesitating a little bit, but then you settled in. Am I right? Yeah, I was actually um, worried that my cats will make any uh, noise. <laughs> so I was like, shall I go to the other room or not? La la, don't worry. My cats are all around. You'll probably see them. I can't control them. It doesn't matter. Excellent. Anyone else? Uh, maybe it becomes warm when you try to disconnect. Nobody becomes Good. warmer. Good. What about you guys? How much? Um, anybody? I felt that there is this shake. I, my body has shaked in a way okay. that, yeah, and it, uh, then it gained this uh, steadiness. So there was this, yeah, move. This is exactly to make you steady. And remember, this is about unboxing. So speak. If you don't speak, you won't get anything. So that's very good. Anyone else? What about you guys? I want to hear from you. I, um, I wanted to say that um, I kind of felt this excitement. You know, there's this excited energy within me. Excellent. It's possibly because I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm sitting with you for the first time. Um, but I centered quite quickly too. Excellent. Well done. Are you a writer? Uh, no, but I do, do write a bit I sometimes. Yeah, I, I do, see a lot of do write. I see a lot of hesitation. So whatever That's you true too. writing, Yani, really get over yourself and start writing. Because in the next three years, your writing will be very important. And okay. you're looking at this the wrong way. You're looking at it as, a, oh, what if I'm good? What if I'm not good? What if I'm get published or don't get published? Really, from experience, don't worry about it. Just write. I don't know what you want to write, but what's missing about you, because when I tune into someone, I see their aura, but I also hear their rhythm. And yeah. what's missing about you is your rhythm. You know, you're like mm -hmm. a very good piece of music, very good notes, mm -hmm. but I don't mm -hmm. know you are in so okay. what, what um energizes us or allows us to manifest is mm -hmm. the energetic rhythm you know you get yeah. up at the same time roughly i don't mean religiously you know you go to bed at the same time you see your friends once a week you go to a movie once a month mm -hmm. you read a new book once a month you sit down and you write once a day even mm -hmm. if it's for 10 minutes okay so there is actually nothing wrong with your confidence you're very able and mm -hmm. Clearly, once you start, you have a clear thinking process. So okay. you have a mind of an engineer and you have the ability and the talent of an artist. Yani, that is the best combination you can have. So get okay. over yourself and just <laughs> write. And start and writing. And the reason I say that, your body is your vehicle. Your body is your machinery. You're the driver, mm -hmm. the soul is the driver or the consciousness is the driver, but your body is the vehicle through which you are driving. So you need to discipline it. And mm -hmm. how do you do that? By sitting regularly at the same time, at the same time of the day or at the same day of the week. And you just sit there. Even if you don't write, you need to build that discipline of, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to write. And then your consciousness will integrate with your body and you will really start driving your own car. At the moment, you are 30% on automatic pilot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're like leaving it yeah. up to chance. It's not working. When you do that, everything waits. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, there is a principle that if you move forward in life, then mm -hmm. things come to you in your wake. Literally, if you've ever been on a boat and you look at that boat behind you, like the boat is going mm -hmm. behind, you will see the water parting and then it comes behind the wake. Right. Yeah, that's right. an yeah. energy principle. So the mm -hmm. more forward in life, things will come to you. But if you park the boat and you wait, everything slows down. Like, you know, I'll wait until I get married or I'll wait until this contacts me or I'll wait until that happens. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Life doesn't work that way. Okay. So the mind works very quickly. Like I know a lot of people, a lot of my clients, they sit and meditate for two hours. I don't. There is no time to sit and meditate for two hours. You can really connect and do it in two minutes like we did today. And the reason is everything is speeding up. Yeah, there is something mm -hmm. called the Schumann resonance, which is the, the way or the vibration or the frequency at which the planet is vibrating. OK, in the past, mm -hmm. like 30 years ago, it was about eight. Now it's about 12. 
So literally things are speeding up. It's possible to write and publish. It is possible to manifest very quickly. It is possible to get centered within two minutes. All of that was not possible long time ago. Now mm -hmm. it is actually possible. Okay. So there does not need to be a big process. There does not need to be, oof, I can't settle down. Really energy moves very quickly. So the biggest thing for all of you, two questions. What is my intention? What is mm -hmm. my motivation? That is truly what guided me in life. If my intention and my motivation are not aligned, if I don't know really why I'm doing this or you know, what, what is my desired result, it doesn't happen. But when the two are in alignment, really it manifests very quickly. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. My intention is, for example, I want love. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what is, you know, what is my purpose? What is my, but is, if my purpose is to tease someone else by dating her guy, that doesn't work. So you need, you need to clear what is my mm -hmm. desire or what is it that I want and what is my intention. And when the two are really in alignment, then things happen. It's okay. I get a lot of questions like, oh, I want money. Is that okay? Yeah. There is nothing spiritual about being poor. On the contrary, if you understand the energy and the energy of manifestation, you can manifest everything, love, money, whatever it is you want, providing it is for your highest good from the heart, for the highest good of humanity at large. So when we are kind of like really selfish in an ego centered way to do with mm -hmm. our personality, this is when confusion happens because it is not for a higher or more meaningful purpose. Yeah. Although people manifest it usually later, there will be a lot of ramifications. So I'm giving you the shortcut. What do I desire? What is my intention? Make sure that you face them, whatever they are. Just make sure that you are in alignment, that truly it is something you want from your heart, not because of lower reason. And you need to understand there is the machinery and there is your consciousness and the two have to integrate. So if you're facing any problems of any kind, it's not that you're doing something wrong, but maybe your consciousness has evolved, but not your body, not your container. You're not allowing your container to expand, to take more content. And this is why things don't happen. So if you're a small jug, you can only hold so much water. Yeah. But if your aura expands, then you can hold more energy, you can manifest more, you can move faster. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes. Hi, Muna. So we started with a short meditation. Don't worry, you didn't miss much. And we're starting with questions, any questions on any level that you have. And the objective of this really is for me to be able to be with you, to give something back for the 30 years that I've have worked with everyone. So I started by looking at, um, is it Sean or is that your, okay. And Sean looked like she has a book in her aura and she was hesitating <laughs> over it. So we spoke about how to manifest and how discipline is important because it is the energetic structure that allows us to build the mold so that it can hold the content, which is our essence, our creative expression in order for things to manifest. Are you with me? Yes, all the way. <laughs> okay, who's next? Hands up, hands up, who's next? I need your date of birth, Sean, by the way. Let me see if I can tell you. So, so my name is actually Shanaz. I've just shortened okay. it there. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's the 3rd of September, 76. Oh, definitely so a writer. Definitely a, a writer. 3rd of December? September. September. Of September, wow. And the year? 76. Yeah, definitely. Not only a writer, but there's a lot of wisdom already. There is that intellect activity, as I mentioned earlier. Oh, wow. And you get bored very quickly. So right now, you're very excited about writing, for example. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it now, phew, you move very quickly and then suddenly you want something else. So there is a danger that um, because of that, you might not finish what you want to start. And therefore, mm -hmm. you might start thinking, oh, I never finish anything. But actually, the reason is because you can manifest very quickly. You just need to sit there and get it done. So your thing is you're juggling a lot of balls, which is fine. It doesn't matter what ball you start with. 
drop them all, see which one bounces back, pick it up, run with it, and then pick up the next ball and so on. So you're not meant to do just one thing in life or achieve one thing in life. You're meant to do it, finish it, move on and so on. This is how you're evolving. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, yeah. Yeah, definitely, oh my God. And you need a lot of discipline. Your soul number is eight, you're being <laughs> up to an eight. So this is a very dramatic number. It's like a nuclear factory. You need to manage it, you need to hone it. There's a lot of passion. There are a lot of gut feeling. So the whole thing needs to be honed, streamlined so that you move forward rather than you spend it reacting. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And um, you fall in love very easily with whatever, whether it's people or things or whatever it is. Um, so Mostly people. <laughs> Okay, I, I didn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> yeah. but this is how you operate. It's like, you know, if you don't fall in love, you don't move, you don't do things. Yeah. So as far as the universe is concerned, if you fall in love with a person, if you fall in love with a job, if you fall in love with whatever, a talent, an ability, a skill, it's the same. Love, mm -hmm. as far as the universe, is the same. So in order to get you to move, you almost have to fall in love. So it's not about the relationship. It's really yeah. about igniting your passion so that you can sit down and do what you want to do. So mm -hmm. don't let love distract you. It's there mm -hmm. as a catalyst, as a catalyst, really, I can't find a better word to kind mm -hmm. of, you know, fire you up so that you mm -hmm. get more engaged in life. To hone all of that energy, you really need structure. You need the discipline, the energetic discipline, as I said, mm -hmm. so that you can hone this energy, move forward in life instead of spending it reacting um, to people. Yeah. The biggest challenge is to listen to your intuition. You're very intuitive, very guided. So it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not, you will learn about that through practice. But if your gut feeling says, no, really, I'm not interested, I'm doing this for the wrong reason, then trust it. If your gut feeling says, you know, um, I don't believe them, I'm going to do this, then trust it. You don't listen okay. enough to your intuition. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes, it does as well. Yeah. Okay. It does. okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Jody. Wow. Okay. Next question. Okay. Go ahead, Rodina. So I'm uh, 24th of April, uh, 1978. April 1978. And is there confusion about a man? <laughs> um, and uh, not really confusion, but uh, let's say. Um, I'm since because I'm married since many years, and yeah. I'm feeling a little bit. Um, uh, it's not so interesting anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, that would be the. It's not confusion really. It's just uh, more uh, thinking and pondering. Um, usually, you know, I, I get sort of maybe fifty-five women clients, forty-five men and it's usually the women um, who don't know how's the relationship going but a man always knows how the relationship is going <laughs> so there is nothing wrong with your relationship but it, what i mean is you're not with the wrong man but it has gone boring a little bit because both of you had gotten into a vibe and you're not investing in it the way that you did maybe 10 years ago so there is a little bit of boredom and both of you, you're well matched. So I can't say this is over, it's not the right man. No, this is not your issue. But your issue is to do or to make more effort into reviving it. Part of why you are not, you personally, I, I don't know about your husband, is you needed to do something in life. And I feel you have not done that yet. So there is a bit of restlessness here. Like, you know, this is not a surprise. You know that you're meant to do something. And I don't know why you're not doing it. Am I right? Um, I, Whatever it is that you want to achieve. Yeah, yeah. It is possible, but I don't think your expression is out there yet. Maybe, yeah, because yeah. I am I'm, um, action taker. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm acting a lot on everything. 
I am doing what I want to do. I am constantly learning something. Um, I'm into nutrition, so I did all the courses. I started health coaching. So I am I'm doing what I want to do. It's more uh, maybe the expression could be yes, absolutely. Maybe I have to express more, push it more. Clarify, it, clarify it more. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I yeah. have all the tools, yeah. but I haven't polished it yet. Yeah, totally agree. What you have is really a business rather than a job. You're seeing it as I'm self-employed, I'm in a job, but I'm self-employed. And it's not. You're creating a container. We were talking yes. about container earlier. Yes. You know the identity of that container, and then you will know how to express that content. So you're looking at it from a limited way. Yeah. I worked for nearly 20 years thinking I was self-employed. I never saw myself as a brand or a business or why am I different or why is it that I do is different. It's only in the last really 10 years that that became clear and specifically in the last five. So I'm, I feel the resonance, if you will. Mm -hmm. so it's not that you're a practitioner doing things. You're a bit more. You have more to offer. You have more tools. You just need to give it an identity or clarify its identity because it is a business. You have a lot of eights um, in your numbers as well, um, which is amazing. So the eight, your eight, looking at your ingredients, oh my God, you, you fight with yourself a lot and then you end up doing whatever it is. Um, the numbers of what you want in life are the same as what your challenges are. So there's a constant kind of tension. You give yourself a hard time, but this is how you build your energy. Yeah. For the person before you, they have to fall in love before they move and do anything in life. For you, you have to fight with yourself, you know, for so long so that it's meaningful. And then you get up and you do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop doing it. Stop doing it. Yeah. This is your challenge. If it feels good, if I want to do it, this is it. Just get up and do it. But, but see the bigger picture. Yeah. Don't, um, see yourself as a self-employed person because this is not about it it's about the service that you're doing you might train others whatever it is that you do there is you training other people you will develop your own method of whatever it is it's already there but it needs to crystallize so it's something bigger really yani you're training quite a lot of people in your field to do what they do in a much more heartful and meaningful way vaguely that's what i'm picking up does that make sense yeah yeah because i do nutrition and health coaching so i would you tell them how to do and what to do yeah so i would help you with the health so it is teaching them yes i think you do a little bit more than that you have strong intuition and your intuition guides you as to the cocktail for example that someone needs so you know the rules about nutrition, but you have an extra feeling about things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And that extra bit is the interesting bit about you. Your brain puts the information and the patient together in a unique way. So you're going to go beyond what you learned is what I'm saying. And you have it. And you may develop out of this coaching business, you may develop a product, a diet, a shake, a smoothie, I don't know something that really works which is going to be the basic thing that for example you start with mm -hmm. does that make sense yes yes totally, totally so you need to sit and like really scribble on a paper what is your process you know from the yeah. moment the client contacts you to the moment you deliver then you able to see what it is that you're offering yeah Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. understand that, then you can magnify it because you need to know why is your approach different? You're not really clear why you think you're doing the same thing as everyone else, but I don't feel that it is so. I feel you've got an extra element and that extra element needs to come out because this is what makes yeah. you different from other people. Yeah. Um, your husband, you need to pay more attention to what I feel is he has been huge support to you throughout this time, like mm -hmm. really a solid rock. So now it's time to give back to maybe to be a little bit more spontaneous. You seem to be somewhat structured or somewhat settled in a certain rhythm and you need to shake that rhythm up a little bit. But he yeah. is the right person 
you need to rediscover each other because both of you have changed a lot in the last 10 to 15 years and you need to kind of hook up again on that higher level mm -hmm. if that makes sense so it surprise makes. i hear the word surprise i hear the word spontaneity there needs mm -hmm. to be you know spontaneous things rather than a lot of planning so the opposite of the person before you yeah yeah that's what he asked me to do okay there you are <laughs> yeah yeah that's true <laughs> Listen, this is another thing. If a man tells you something, listen to it. They mean yes, it. Yes, you're right. I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next. Who's next? Ah, okay. Let's go to Muna and then we go to Nada. Only because I saw Muna first. That's all. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sahak, for uh, this invitation. No, thank I'm you here because I'm very curious uh, about everything. <laughs> My curiosity led me to this meeting <laughs> and definitely your invitation. Well, thank you for giving up your hour and being with us. I'm really grateful. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you. Mona, your date of birth? Uh, 28th of January, 76. Okay. And what is your question, if there is one? Actually, I don't have any question. I just uh, um, abstract about life. <laughs> I think you do, but take some time and formalize it. Let me just look at your numbers. Um, I think um, you're wondering why things are not moving along. I think you tell yourself, I'm doing everything, everything is okay, but I want more. Why is more not coming? Does that make sense? Uh, actually, in these days, I'm questioning my finding my voice. Why my voice is not being heard? uh in what context uh in general in, in general. the world in your family in your relationship in the family in the in the with my co um, clients with my colleagues it's just i noticed that i always have a lower voice and i'm not allowing myself to be really uh, uh heard or um Okay. Having the smooth, uh, yeah, okay. with my, yeah. So when we talk about voice, it's very, very important because your voice is what is unique about you. You know, just like we have um, unique fingerprints, we have a unique pitch or, or note that nobody else has. So when you feel my voice is not being heard, if you are a tuning fork and if I were to strike you, you're not allowing yourself to resonate, yeah? So when I look at you, it is the throat chakra, but the throat chakra, where is it situated? Between the heart and between intuition. Mm -hmm. So I want you to do two things, visualize or imagine more. Imagine being heard. If you are in a meeting and your voice is not heard, imagine that you speak strongly, assertively, and everyone hears. So you do everything to do with imagination to strengthen this chakra, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then the heart, the reason you have a block is because you operate a little bit from the solar plexus. You kind of pull your will together in order to be heard. So it comes out very strained. Does that make sense? So the way to get your strength is here from the heart. If you're truly passionate about what you're saying and you said you're very curious, curiosity for me is number one core value then allow this passion to come out and to voice your opinion so i don't know what you're scared about i don't feel that you are scared to express your opinion in case people think less of you i don't think this is your issue i think the issue goes back to the past where you were not allowed to say to speak up or you thought you're not allowed maybe it was too crowded at home maybe family situation was too much you're a little bit too polite for me. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing here. But you need to stimulate the imagination. What I'm saying is, if your container gets used to speaking your truth, you know, I have something to say, can I say it like that? You know, then if you imagine doing that, if you imagine saying it, then it will be a lot easier because your body will have the memory of doing it. That's the shortest cut. So never mind why, never mind, you know, why did you not do it? Never mind why the past was not perfect. You can start from the present. And this is really the principle of Unbox. Never mind what happened in the past. We can start from now. Energetically speaking, as far as how energy flows, it flows down, it flows up. 
So you're stuck in the middle. So we look at the center above, we look at the center below. If you're not passionate about something, then you don't feel strongly about expressing it. So always check here. If you feel passionate about it, then voice it. The second thing, as I said, imagine, feel the passion. The second thing, the vibration for the throat is, is the letter E, as in C. Mm -hmm. So you take a deep breath in, and then you chant, e and you see how long it goes. And if you practice that, practice that, it would literally open your throat chakra. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Everybody, would you like to mm -hmm. gather so that we encourage Mona to do it? Okay, so deep breath in. I'm not judging you. Just belt out E as in C. And I'm going to send you the, the chakra sounds, actually. You can print it out and you can use it as a meditation every day. I used to do this with my mom and she loved it. And she was like 87. We used to do it every day. Uh, where is the chat thing here? Is it this one? I can't see my chat box. Can somebody send me a message so I can see where the chat is? Okay. Bye. Oh, good. Okay. So to everyone. So I'm glad you asked this question because really it is the shortest cut. This is like tuning. Oh, it's not copying. I don't know why. Um, okay, I don't know why it's not copying. Uh -uh, don't come here. Uh, what I will do is I will email it to you or I can do it through WhatsApp. Um, for some reason, I cannot copy and paste. Okay, I will send you, I will send you my uh, number. It's not pasting at all, and I don't know why. Maybe you're not allowed to anymore. I have no idea. Um, but I would like to send it to you so, you so that you practice. But let's do it together because, you know, when we are together, it's a lot stronger. So we'll send her a lot of E to Mona. Deep breath in, like really all the way down to your belly. And... I see most of you don't mean it. So the universe is not going to listen. Again, 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 again. again. You know, it sounds like you will. Otherwise, you're not good. Really. Yeah? Big E. And. E. Let it go as far as it wants to go. So can you see that you don't really believe in yourselves, all of you? <laughs> Bit of shyness. It's one life. There is no time to be shy, to hide behind anything. If you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? Yeah, when? So you need to allow, most of us look for reasons. So of many of my clients um, are so used to seeing therapists and they see them for such a long time and they think they know what their problem is. So when they come to me, they come, you know, like, I'm this, I've got that. Blah, blah. Like, who told you? So oh, the cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, the cat is. <laughs> this is Mr. Wozel. Mr. Wozel, say hello. So don't box yourself. Work with your energy. Work with your aura. Work with what you have got. Be in charge of your mind. If you don't do it now, then who? What? Who's going to give you permission? So you need to allow yourself, Mona, to express yourself, to say what you want. Your specific issue is just really check. Am I passionate about it? If you are, say it. Otherwise, it's going to burst. As an instrument, your body is a little bit clogged. So the, the sound E will open up. But I do want to send you all the sounds. I normally start from the first one, which is the base chakra. And as you say each letter, they are really the vowels in English that really tune up your instrument. You will know what your strongest point is. Yeah. The easiest sound that you can make, that's your strongest chakra. So E is about self-expression or communicating your self-expression. So you need to practice that a little bit. 
And for me, you are too structured, maybe. You know, spontaneity is another word that comes to mind as I look at your letters and passion. These are too strong. So more spontaneity and connect with your passion. And then you say what you say from the heart. And as they say, whatever arises from the heart will be received by the heart. So the ego will not be involved. For me, the ego is the lower body. That's our personality. Then the heart, we begin to connect with our spiritual self. And the top three centers are literally spiritual. This is where you get your imagination, your intuition. This is how, you know, when you sing or compose music, you hear sounds. Do you know what I'm saying? So if this is blocked, you're not following your intuition. Why? Because you're not connecting with your passion. So don't worry about how are people going to judge me. And for you, technically, you need to imagine it first. If you feel it emotionally in your skin, it will get a lot easier to do in person. So have the memory and then your body mind system can actually do that. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Excellent. Other than that, really, you don't have an issue. Everything is in the right place. Again, like the person before you, I feel you're building up for something big and you don't know what it is. So there is something about you that's going to go beyond the job, which is truly your self expression. So if you're too organized, you're not going to allow yourself to step out and do something different. Do you know what I'm saying? You I need feel to like, yeah, sometimes uh, playing with colors, I'm very expressive with colors, but not with the words. That's the thing with, uh, with the expression. And I am more into uh, like... I, I think there is, there is nothing wrong with your words. You've expressed yourself yeah. very well. <laughs> <laughs> So we're not looking at vocabulary. Um, it's the passion. With I will also make a note. I have a sheet to help people express themselves. It's basically a sheet with different words. You know, how to say sad in a hundred different words or how to say happy in a hundred different words. Just like when you play the piano, it's just to give you a different scale of what you're trying to say. I think sometimes it's a, it's a combination of what do I want to say and then finding the right word to say it. So maybe the sheet will make you more, um, will help you to be more expressive because you're aware of the alternatives, but really it's not like a serious block like you think it is. I think you're giving it more weight, which is blocking you more. So when you get <laughs> to the point where you want to express, you feel, oh, no, I can't, you know, I've got this, I can't do that. It's not. Yani, the issue is not what you think it is. You just need to imagine it. You need to see yourself doing it or, or saying it in front of certain people. I see four people with whom it is very difficult for you to express yourself. Yeah. So whoever these four people are, practice on them. Visualize them sitting, looking at you in front of you, or just pretend that they're sitting in front of you on a chair and tell them what you need to tell them before you actually meet with them and tell them what you need to tell them. Okay. If you run that, or if you look at the mirror and you say it, I usually imagine they're sitting in front of me and I say it and I tell them what I need to tell them. And usually by the time I meet them, I don't even have to say that because somehow it moved into their consciousness. Believe me, it works, but you need to pretend. And I just want to tell you very quickly, um, when I was growing up in Kuwait, I had an aunt who was living with us and um, she was like one of the first broadcasters on TV. And back then they used to print the program, all the sheets, you know, there was no telemonitor or whatever. So she, she used to come home and give us all these sheets. And my sister and I used to sit and play and, and imitate her, you know, and, and say things and pretend we're on TV. So by the time I got to university and I needed to go in front of a group and present something, it was almost second nature. I was an extremely shy person, but I did it because I played it so much with my sister when we were young. And this is where I got the idea that if you practice something, it becomes part of your nature. It becomes possible for your psyche because you've done it in practice. And then when the time comes, phew, it comes out and you do it so easily. So this is where imagination is so important. If you can't imagine it, you can't really do it. Okay. Yeah, visualize, see yourself doing it, make it a cellular memory, get excited, you know, say it, get your voice right, experiment with words. And the next time you get to a meeting, you will do this very, very easily.
Does that make sense? Yeah, a lot. Is Thank that, you. Is that helpful? Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Nada? Okay. Let me get your date of birth, Nada, and then think what your question is. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My 16, pleasure. Thank you. 16 May 84. And what is your question? Um, well, I'm super stuck on so many levels. <laughs> okay, what's the most important level? <laughs> um, work. Uh, okay. I don't know that you are stuck in work. You could be working for the wrong people. because you don't have a problem with work. You have a problem with clarifying what is not right in anything in life, Yanni. What is not right about my home or what is not right about my job. But you don't have a block in job. Your career path is absolutely open, absolutely open. This is not your lesson in life. Your lesson in life is to be all that you can be to allow yourself to be all that you can be. So the only thing that I see standing in Nada's way is Nada, not the other, not the person, not the boss, not the job. And um, there is something about you, a little bit, 20, 30%, is waiting for permission to live life. This is because of an old programming where the teacher always tells us whether we've passed or not or you know parents tell us whether we've done good or not so you're waiting for this kind of acknowledgement it's like oh okay you've done well and i feel in this job you're not getting that does that make sense yeah so either you voice your opinion or you move containers you move to another um company because you're 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 good at what you do you just need to have your match to find your match so allow yourself to be all that you can be. Stand up for yourself a little bit. Have small meetings. What I see is small meetings are better, like with your immediate boss or with his boss or whatever, and say, I want an evaluation. What am I doing? I don't know what your job is, but it entails a lot of creativity, a lot of meeting, a lot of discussing with people. There is all of that. Do you do all of that in your current job? Um, actually, the opposite. <laughs> really? So yeah. is it boring? yeah okay so get out <laughs> life is too short you will be meeting you will be talking you will be um small groups i i see a lot of small groups like you know meeting with so, small groups i don't see you on stage for example but a lot of meeting a lot of communication it's almost marketing advertising something really exciting very creative doodling designing it's really really interesting and a lot of survey or a lot of research is also coming up. So I think it's just a question of the container is wrong. So if it is possible, visualize the kind of job that you want and really just go and get it and you will. I wanna do an exercise um, with you, with Nada, but you can all equally do it for yourselves according to your situation. Again, it's a visualization exercise, but it's extremely powerful. Are you willing to do all of that? Together? Yes? Yes. 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 I yes. don't hear you. <laughs> yes. 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 Give me a strong yes. Okay. So let's go into silence. Connect with your inner self. Forget everyone else. And I want you to see yourselves again at the center of the universe. So for those who weren't with us, you visualize sitting with your back straight and you see um, your light going all the way up from the bottom of the spine all the way to the highest star in the heaven. And as soon as you hit that star, the star greets you back, sending a beam of white light all the way down through your head, through your spine, out of your spine, all the way down through the floor, through the crust of the earth, to the center of the earth and out of the center of the earth. So you are sitting on the earth and the earth is at the center of the universe. And I want you to see where you are, that location, at the center of a sphere. And the sphere is like a circular room that has a lot of doors. And pose your question to yourself now. So for Nada, it is, 
how did I get that new job? Yeah. So I want to go to my future self where she is in the right job. Put your hand on the door handle. And when you are absolutely ready, open the door. And the first thing is you're going to see is your future self in that future situation. And I want you to make a mental note of what does that future self look like? What is he or she doing? Where is she or he? What are you doing? And just observe how your future self got that goal done, achieved that goal. When you're looking at your future self for so long, suddenly your future self notices you and it looks back at you. And if you're doing this with a lot of intention, you should feel a little bit, a surge of energy coming, rushing back at you, like making that contact. Now look at your future self and ask it, how did you get there? What did you do? And let your future self give you the first step. When you've understood that, ask again, what is the next step? And again, what is the third step? And is there a fourth step? When you've gathered that, you can ask your future self, what time, what year, what date are they in right now? And this is how long you need to give yourself to reach that goal. Thank your future self. Give in a lot of love, a lot of gratitude. See the door closes. See yourself back on earth at the center of the earth. And from your heart, send a huge love and thank you beam to the sphere. And feel all of the universe responding back, sending you lots of love. You literally feel this when you do it with a lot of concentration. I literally feel a pulse of electricity coming up my spine. Okay, and if you're happy with that, let the image dissolve and come back to the room that you're in, to the chair you're sitting on. Feel your toes, wiggle your toes, and when you're ready, open your eyes. And Nada, let me ask you, did you see your future self? Nope. I, I did, did you? No. No? Did you open the door? What did yeah, you Yeah, I, I, I did no I didn't see anything it's so uh, that's probably because I'm I don't know what I want it's I have no clue what I want it doesn't matter but it's a visualization so you're trying to control it with your mind but if you allowed yourself to go with the flow you would have got an indication of what was she doing so I feel you were so here rather than where we were going that you did not see it, but I'll come back to you. Did anyone else see anything else about themselves or their future self? Yes or no? I saw. Mm. I was uh, <laughs> running around like crazy, putting different shoes. <laughs> okay. You'll be like a clown. <laughs> okay. It's what I saw. <laughs> what, what does that mean to you? Maybe having more fun? Because a clown for me is fun. It's yeah, dangerous. running around quickly, busy, yeah. putting on shoes, yeah. changing on shoes. Color? Was there lots of color? I feel. No. Um, so I think no, it's it was planning. beige and brown. Beige and brown. Yeah. Was your clown happy or sad? It was busy. <laughs> Are you it doing? It was not sad. It was for sure not sad. Okay. It and was not for sure like a crazy happy, but busy. Um, in a good way. Okay. Do you need to be more busy towards your goal, whatever your goal was? Yeah. Yes. Did you ask for steps? Um, but the clown is a is a is a fun thing. So don't take yourself too seriously. Is what I'm trying to say. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like have fun with it. Maybe it's hectic, but I love it. I mean, I wake up every day. Yeah. And I thank God for what I do because I love every minute of it. You know, thank God yes. I'm not in a company job or whatever it is. 
So that's the feeling. So, you yeah. know, it's not hard work. It should not be hard work. Yeah, who you are, what you do, you should be in love with it every day and don't yep. take yourself too seriously. Yeah? Yes. I think that's what okay. you saw. Um, yep. Anyone else? Did you see your future self? Wanted I... to, but couldn't. Nothing? <laughs> When you opened the door, you did not see anything. I felt like I was kept on pulling, pull, kept on being pulled back into today. To now, okay. Is it maybe because we're all together and you're a little bit conscious of what you're doing? Maybe. No, no, no. It's no. because of my present situation. Oh, I so think. you have something going on in the present that you're pulling you back. Okay, Muhammad, anything? Mona, Jody, Tracy. Um, for me, it is hard that I can say what's going to happen or as I, I didn't visualize because I saw myself inside this uh, oval room that's the okay. this sphere okay. and with the, all the doors on the around me okay I was hesitated to choose which door to open I know that's the brain that's the logical brain I'll just choose pick a door okay did you open the door no I was afraid of opening a door because I wanted <laughs> oh. to know I wanted to know every door over there, so I don't want to choose this okay, one and... Okay, let me interrupt. Yeah. This is very logical. This is an exercise in imagination to transcend the logic, to help us connect with our passion. So what happened is you tried, because I know you, you tried to be really logical, rational, to make sense of what was going on. But remember, the brain is two halves. It's like a chariot with two horses. We need logic, we need imagination. If you lack in one, you'll end up going around in circles, yeah? So sometimes the shortcut for me is to imagine. If I can imagine it, then I can do it. If I can't imagine it, then I know it's not gonna happen. To give you a very brief example, um, my brother had a very rare autoimmune disease, very rare, like at that time, three people in the world had it, and we have no idea why it happened, how it happened. And, you know, we did a lot of things, he passed away, but, you know, I kept visualizing, I kept seeing us, you know, growing in the future, like what would happen? I could never see that. I, I was not able to see him in my future. And, and this is when I knew, you know, this is it, he's gonna go. Um, so really, I really mean it, imagination is potent. Anything you want it, if you can't imagine it, you can't manifest it. It just will not happen. So next time, allow yourself to be a little bit more flexible, maybe when we meet next time. And if we do a visualization thing, just imagine, you know, let go, really be creative. This is not the time to make sense. Be creative, see if you can imagine it, then you come back to reality, and then you are logical, and then you put a process. You know, like architects, when they wanna build something, architects are very different from civil engineers, and I was a civil engineer. Architects maybe are more creative, and, you know, sometimes we had a lot of tension with architects because they imagine things that you cannot do, which is not true. But this is what civil engineers would like to think. So we need both. We need the creativity and we need the logic in order to make things happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what door you choose. There's plenty of time. You can go through any door. You can do anything. You know what's wrong of doing whatever you want to do for a couple of years or so. When you get bored, then you move on. So don't judge yourself. I want to come back to um, Tracy. You wanted to say something. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. Hi. Great to see you. Thank you so much for having this. My pleasure. Yeah, just, just quickly, um, I saw the door. Um, I've done lots of visualization before, and this time <laughs> I was letting a lot of people in the door. Okay. I don't know who they were. But, <laughs> but did you so. see your future self? Yes. Yeah. Did you see yourself doing whatever it is that you needed to do? Uh, I was just starting to, and it was something about the people that I was letting in the door. So but I, I think... What that sorry, go ahead. Is maybe people are distracting you? Mm -hmm. Because I've never <laughs> seen people come through my door. Um, <laughs> No, really, because the intention <laughs> is about you. So that means mm -hmm. part of your psyche is a little bit busy, like Sana, maybe a bit busy about the problem today, or you're a little bit too occupied with other people in your life, so they will pop up in your imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. next time, if you're with us, that's a very good thing. I'll make a note. Maybe we should clear the mind first. I think I've done it with you, Sana. 
where we imagine a swimming pool and we kick everyone out. We'll do mm -hmm. that so that you clear your mind and then we do the visualization. But the important thing is, did you get, for example, what she was doing? Did you get how long it took her to be there? Yes, and, and I had the observation um, that I shouldn't be letting everybody in the door. I think that's the message for right now. Yeah. That's a very practical yeah. advice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Jody, yeah. anything, Jody? I opened the door and I just saw myself extremely busy. Okay, like, we've got another busy person. Okay. <laughs> and then my phone rang and then I snapped oh. out. Of <laughs> Did it ring the visualization or in real life? In real life, it rang. <laughs> Do you know, do you have a feeling of what were you busy doing? Busy is literally do something. So I, with maybe, work, I was, I was because right now I'm not busy because I'm not selling because there's a supply chain issue. So in my, in my, in behind that door, I was very, very busy. So maybe it's about action. I think for you and for Radina, just take steps towards whatever is possible. Like if I'm met with something that I can't do anything about, then I ask myself, okay, what is it possible? What, it, what, what is possible for me today to do, to do today? What is possible for me to do right now? What is possible for me to do today? And your brain will give you a totally different answer. So basically, remember the boat thing? You should always be doing something because in your wake, things will get streamlined and then you'll begin to see the picture forward. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I want to go, Muna, did you get anything about your future self? Uh, not much. I didn't enter any doors. Le, why? <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh, not easy to visualize much. It's like I need like more time or I needed to ground myself or something before I no, get into No, no. I think you are like uh, Muhammad, a little bit too logical because from your numbers, you have a lot of structure. You'll make a very good civil engineer. Um, <laughs> so, no, really. So you need to. Um, oh well, I struggle with, with structure. I want to break free of the structures. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's what I mean. You need to really break free. I have no idea why I can't text anyone. Oh, I can text, but I can't copy and paste. Okay, I will send you that visualization. So I'm. Oh. I'm I really believe now you need to do the sounds and you'll open up and you can imagine and then you can express and then you can see. So there's definitely, when I look at you now, this is a bit cloudy, yeah. yeah. You can do this, you can even just shake it, you know, like clockwise and then anti-clockwise. And if you can sit every day, this is for all of you, two minutes with your eyes closed, but imagine looking at this area. So your eyes will go up a little bit, that will stimulate the, the, the third eye, the sixth chakra, and then imagination will be a lot easier. So if you keep looking here, you'll begin to see a sphere. I mean, you can do it on your own time. Actually, let's do it now, and I'll try and send you some energy to open up this center so that you can receive the imagination. Shall we do that? And then I'll come back to you, Nada, okay? Okay. Deep breath in. Again, very quickly, go into your silence. Kind of scan, make sure all of you is here. And I want you to imagine or draw a line that's coming straight at you into your third eye through the bridge of the nose between the eyebrows. And it's a straight line that comes out of the back of your head. Okay. Now the second line is going through one ear and coming out the other ear. And where these two lines meet is the center of your head. And I want you to imagine or pretend that you have a pool at the center of your head. It's your ideal pool. It's your sanctuary. And look around. If you see anyone in your pool, take a water gun and squirt at them. Shoo, shoo, out. So make sure the center of your head is very clear. The pool is really lovely. It's the ideal temperature. Imagine sitting there on a lilo. The sun is comfortably warm, you're cool, you're happy, you're safe, you're protected. Once you got that image, I want you to imagine or pretend that you're looking at a very huge, big diamond, clear, crystal clear diamond. And the diamond is so lovely, so beautiful, like it fits in the palm of your hand. 
and see it coming at you very, very slowly, really to your third eye between the eyebrows. See half of it sticking out and half of it inside your head. And just allow the two energies to blend. Now see your diamond rotating clockwise, radiating bright white light all the way, all the way to the end of the universe. Very gently rotating clockwise, and then it gently stops. And gently it starts rotating anti-clockwise, radiating light in all directions from your third eye to the center of the universe. And then it gently stops. Now slowly, gently draw that diamond in to your pool, to the center of your head. And fix it at the center of your head. And again, see that white light radiating all the way out in all directions. Allow it to vanish in your head. And anytime you, you need clarity, you can think of your diamond at the center of your head and you sit for a minute and you see the white light radiating outwards in all directions. Now, if you want to do the doors again, very quickly, see yourself at the center of that sphere, the sphere of time, because past, present, future are all connected. Muhammad and Nada, see yourself looking at a door, the door that you are meant to enter through right now, whatever that door is. State your intention in your head. My intention is to contact my future to self to see how they've manifested whatever. Take a deep breath in, and when you're ready, open that door again. And just observe your future self doing what they're doing until they notice you. So watch with a lot of intent. Where are they? What are they doing? How do they feel? What are the colors? Pick up as many details as you can. You can later analyze them. And then suddenly, your future self notices you so you can ask it, what are you doing? What kind of job you are in? How did you get there? All of these questions, whatever comes to your mind, ask your future self now. Give me more clarity. Thank your future self. Step back through the door, close that door. Go back to your center, at the center of the earth. See the whole image sphere dis you dissolve. Come back to your room. I know we're doing this very quickly, but you guys, you're actually doing it. And think of yourself again, of your feet again on the floor. Maybe tap your feet, wiggle your toes. And I hope, Nada, you saw something this time. Did you? Yeah, I did. Excellent. Jody, Radina, is it clearer? Sana, is it clearer? Mona? Yeah. Yes. Mona? Yes. Get into yes. It? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Okay, we've got like a couple of minutes left. Did I miss anyone? Anyone has any questions? Jody, Tracy, Tracy? Hi. Um, so I'll be quick. I met you in London uh, when I was living there. I remember. Um, just, just a quick recap. Um, my mom had passed after five months of cancer. She was 62. Oh, so, yeah, so that was 2006. So I've learned a lot, had a lot of lessons spiritually, emotionally, men mentally. I've lived in three countries since then. Um, and I'm back in Canada now and I have a nine-year-old. Um, oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so much happened after I spent time with you several times. So thank you very oh, much for sorry. all of your guidance. Um, and I would like to spend more time with you going forward. So I'll send a note to you. Okay. Um, so I'm trying hard to come up with <laughs> one question because <laughs> I'm pretty curious as a, as a human. Um, 
And I, I think the people coming through the door, I do have a lot of people that I'm feel like I'm serving or taking care of right now. And that's sort of who I am. So that hasn't changed. Um, one is my father. I'm separated um, from my daughter's husband, um, which is the right thing. Uh, I'm just trying to finish it and I've surrendered completely to all of that. Um, and then my income was cut in half about a year ago. So that's getting a lot better. I'll give you my dates again. Would you like that? Yeah. Sorry. So it's uh, March 23rd, uh, 1969. Okay. And so I'll just stop there <laughs> for now. So there's a big challenge about finding the right people who can help you manifest what you want. So it's okay to help others because your soul number is number six. So part mm -hmm. of your um, life purpose is to help others, but it's not your job, if you see what I mean. Right. But you yeah. want to help, but okay. if you overdo it, you will go out of balance. So there's mm -hmm. a big thing about you and balance. Um, mm -hmm. My mentor once said, spiritual mentor said, let your giving be from your overflowing. Mm -hmm. If it's full and you give, you're not depleted. But if you give when you don't have much, you will really mm -hmm. run your energies down and then you're no good to your family or to anyone else on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it became a rule. This was like almost 25 years ago. I will not give if my cup is not full. I will mm -hmm. cancel a, like a client's appointment. I will mm -hmm. postpone it or whatever it is. If I think I'm not there 100% and I'm not mm -hmm. giving mm -hmm. because it doesn't go anywhere and it only depletes you. And if you are depleted, your light is not going to shine and therefore you're not doing anyone any service. Mm -hmm. And whenever mm -hmm. out of frustration, you know, I used to go to my mentor and say, oh, you know, I'm tired of doing this. And then he, he would say, stop, who asked you? And truly, no mm -hmm. one asked me to do this. I didn't see mm -hmm. any angel coming down or, you know, people do. I didn't. I chose to do this. And actually, mm -hmm. it's a lot stronger because it was your decision, your commitment. It's a lot stronger. And I feel I want to tell you the same thing. No one asked you to help others. So be mm -hmm. very careful because sometimes we do that to distract ourselves from what we need to do because it makes mm -hmm. us feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. I took mm -hmm. care of my father and then I took care of my brother and then I took care of my um, mother and then I took care of my husband. But then in the end, you come back to yourself and okay, what is my life about? But if mm -hmm. you give in balance, then you do. Of course, there are times like when somebody is ill, when my mother was mm -hmm. older and she was ill, I gave her 100% mm -hmm. because she gave 100%. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. don't yeah. give because it makes you feel good, but you ignore mm -hmm. yourself. Because mm -hmm. then you really regress in life. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. This balance is, is what I pick about you. The other thing, you need to sleep well. You have so mm -hmm. much, um, in Chinese, you have so much metal. You're very sensitive. Your subconscious mm -hmm. is very sensitive. You're wearing the right color. That is your color, blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's, it's mediumship, it's also self-expression. What I hear is you should learn to say no more often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like I have a young niece living with me whose father has passed away, my brother has passed away. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have a soft spot for her because she went through a lot. She was the middle child and she really got lost when he died. Mm -hmm. But now she moved to Dubai, she lived for two years with me and then pushed her out when she was ready and now she's living mm -hmm. on her own. So she just calls and says, I'm coming over. And I would say, no, I've got mm -hmm. things to do. I'm not free, although I adore mm -hmm. her. And she mm -hmm. always brings this on me, but I learned. And she said, why, you don't miss me? I said, no, I do, but you have to think of me. You have to think mm -hmm. of one day, what I need to do. So I mm -hmm. kind of taught her very gently to kind of mm -hmm. think of other people, not just her and yeah. you know, be available. So I've actually given her more. It's when I mm -hmm. say no, I'm showing her too that she needs to find her balance and not mm -hmm. just things without any consideration to anything else. Mm -hmm. She does that because she's so focused on her work, which I understand. And the mm -hmm. same for you. Everyone will survive. <coughs> her daughter will survive. She will find her own way. I feel her marriage ending is the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, really, it is. And she will find happiness again. I need to tell you that. And very possibly by February of next year, because that chapter is over. 
as far as I'm concerned. So the two people, the two souls met, they exchanged whatever they needed to exchange, and now things have to find their way. Mm -hmm. Logically, it may not make sense, but spiritually it does. Not everyone is like that. You know, I have a lot of couples who come in and they think their marriage is over, and I say, no, you're meant to be together. But I feel mm -hmm. that is done because the marriage wasn't allowing her to evolve in the way, to grow in the way that she needed to. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Is my marriage, just so you know. Okay. Okay. I heard Sorry. something about your, you said my daughter, yeah. my son-in-law, I got confused. So, Sorry, yeah, it's only nine, yeah. So if, yeah. of course, <laughs> so, so <laughs> if we're talking about you, I feel that is over because it's, yeah. it's either holding you back or you haven't evolved together mm -hmm. in the same way, like, you know, different direction. Yeah. But you got what you needed to get out of that marriage, if I may say, mm -hmm. that little soul needed mm -hmm. to come through you and your husband, and it did. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like, don't make this more traumatic than it needs to be, if I mm -hmm. may say. And I still mm -hmm. maintain you could very well meet someone by February. So mm -hmm. you will not be alone. There will be mm -hmm. someone, but it needs to be your equal, your match. Um, yes. Yeah. Also yeah. feel whatever your job is, you really are going to build a business of your own. So you're going to okay. do what you do, but maybe you do it on your own as a consultant mm -hmm. or as a trainer or as something which will give you the flexibility. So you need to visualize that. You know, I have enough mm -hmm. money coming in. I am financially stable, which will make mm -hmm. me emotionally available. And then mm -hmm. all of that will happen. I don't mm -hmm. see your daughter suffering. I, I don't know if you are in the French part of Canada or not. I hear a lot of French. So French. Mm -hmm. are, yeah, okay. Yeah. French for her mm -hmm. would be very important and mm -hmm. she would use it or speak it in, in countries other than Canada. So there's a lot yeah. of in her life. Um, um, Europe, Italy, around Italy would mm -hmm. be very important. Very creative girl, very beautiful, very grounded, and she'll combine creativity and business together. Mm -hmm. but stop all those people coming through the door. You know, now is the okay. time for you <laughs> to, well yeah. to focus on yourself to take care of yourself. There is something about your diet that is not, your system is not digesting or it's not giving you um, energy as much. It's like, it, it makes you feel down, really. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Whatever that is, just notice what you're eating and don't eat it. So chemistry is affecting you as well, affecting your mm -hmm. mood. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. And, and just quickly, I don't want to take up too much more time, but you... Before my daughter was even born, <laughs> you said the same thing. Isn't that amazing? Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. So there we are. We are. You are on track, is what I'm saying. Okay. So and the it divorce, happens. Oh, brilliant. So the divorce, the separation, <laughs> believe me, it's not the end of life. Yeah, I'm not worried. And I'm, I'm not worried about being alone. I never have been. No, but I it's a, have a friend it's creating, on, you know? Yeah, it's got, it's taking up space, right? And I'm very aware of taking space of others and of myself in particular now finally yeah so it's i've got to just finish it as much not with not owning it but just saying here you go wrap it up, wrap it <laughs> here's up. the paperwork you do yeah. what you want and you know i'm good yeah. over do here <laughs> do it from the heart is what i mean because he's a friend. yeah he's part of your yeah. family, but you're not meant to continue as partners yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and the one last yeah. thing for you is music yeah you respond oh. to music very quickly, your body, because, you know, music, we hear it through all the cells, literally. So, you know, listen to music. I, I make lists on, on Spotify. I make lists mm. of music to write to. I make lists to do exercise mm. to. I make lists to write poetry. They're all very different. I make lists to kind of meditate to. Music supports you because it goes into mm. the cellular system very mm -hmm. quickly and gets your mm -hmm. rhythm right, yeah? So listen mm -hmm. to music, wear the color blue, maybe wear a blue crystal here. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not a trauma. You know, you're not traumatized. Mm -hmm. I think logically you're telling mm -hmm. yourself, well, I should be. It's the end of my marriage. But I feel deep down you are friends. You can be friends. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. you communicate, just communicate from the heart. There's nothing personal. Mm -hmm. So don't make it personal. Mm -hmm. so yeah. on, you know, recover and, mm -hmm. and move forward with your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you very much. I'll see you right. again. Thank you. <laughs> Please come and join me next time. I look forward to it. And Sana, do you want to say something very quickly? 
You forgot about me. I did forget about you, but I'm trying to address as much as I can in an hour because then I get really run down, but I'll take you. And then if it's okay, we'll wrap it up and I'll see you next month. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, Sana, go ahead. And, and give me your date of birth because I don't know it by heart. What is your birth, Sana, date of birth? Unmute. 10-8-1964. Okay. And what is your question? I just, because I wasn't able to get out of the now, you know, I just want to see how am I going to start moving out of this now. You took us into the room. I couldn't even move out. Why? So open. I couldn't move. I was, I'm stuck. Again, I'm stuck. Why, why are you stuck? Is it because something is happening in real life? I'm stuck because of everybody around me a bit. Okay, did you take your gun and did you squirt them all out of your headspace? You While must, I was cool. <laughs> you must allow yourself a break, even if it's an energetic break in your imagination. Yeah? That is so important. Um, I normally visualize myself, um, there's a basket of worries. I have a basket of worries. And before I sleep, I acknowledge my worries. I'm worried about this. I put it in the basket. I'm worried about that. Acknowledge and let go, but really try and get some good sleep. During the day, you can do the same. Just push them out, push them out, you know, really breathe and see your aura expanding and allow yourself a minute or two without them invading your head, your brain, or your mind. In that moment, you will push them back and then you will realign, readjust, and then you can think. When I look at you now, the reason you feel that way is because however small, but there is a part of you that allows people to interfere or to take over or to come in a little bit like Tracy. So just make sure that you know where your boundaries are. And as we said, if your cup is full, then give. If it's not full, then just say no. I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. I can't do it right now. But don't explain. So what I feel about you is you are split between doing what's right for you and doing what's right for other people. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. Totally. Don't do yes. that. Basically, literally stop doing it. So one day, honor yourself. Another day, maybe do if you can for the other person. And that's a very hard lesson to learn to say no. I mean, it's so simple, but it needs to be from the heart, you know, like, why am I doing it so that they love me more or da la la la. I think you build, Yanni, when I look at you, I see you build a construct, you know, I need to do this because I'm expected to do it because da 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 da. But it's not true. If your heart is not in it, you're not serving yourself and you're not serving those people. So you push back. And you rediscipline everyone. When you are ready, you open the door, you do what you can do. When you're feeling low, you just shut it back and say, okay, not now, later. So you're not saying no, but you're saying later. So learn to push as a first step. And then you learn to say yes. Once you really feel, is my cup full or is it empty? If it's empty, just shut off, switch the phone off. I switch my phone off after seven and I don't answer anyone at all. Um, because I know I need about three hours to wind down. Like right now, I can't go to sleep right away. I need my ritual. I need to wind down. I'll switch everything off. <sighs> and then I'll go to sleep. And I feel you need that because you have a lot of metal too, um, like Nada did. And you need to sleep well and you need to really literally disengage. So it's an energetic problem rather than a psychological problem. You just need to learn to mark your space to breathe, to push everyone back. But go to the center of the head because it's all here. And again, phew, you know, spray everyone, see them empty, see the pool really flat, smooth, silent, nothing is happening and relax on that pool. Even if you do it for a minute, it's very good for your brain. And once you push them back, then you can take them back one by one and deal with your life and whatever is happening in your life. So the mind, yeah, we drive with the mind. If your mind is not a good driver, you will drive your vehicle, which is your body, into the wall. You'll suffer emotionally, physically, in every way. So control this, be in the driver's seat, take frequent breaks during the day. Believe me, even one minute will do. 
clear that headspace, be on your own, push your boundaries away, and then resume your day. Does that help? And I think I should do that. And don't keep thinking, I can't do this. You can't do this because you're not doing it. I mean, you know my theory. When you go home and it's dark, do you think about switching the light on or do you switch it on? You switch it on. If you don't take an action, nothing will change. It's that simple. So your action is switch everything off, say no, do one minute where you go into your pool, you clear everyone out, you, you know, spray them. During the day, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, if you need to, I do it five times a day. If I'm overwhelmed, I will, I will. And it does work. And practice what we did earlier. You know, when you speak to someone, you imagine them looking at you and just tell them enough. Give me space. You know, I want to help, but I can't help all the time in the same way because I'm tired or I'm depleted or whatever it is. I think sometimes as if I'm talking to their consciousness, even if I don't see them. So when I actually see them, we get on a lot better. I really okay. believe that because the self will fight you. But if you talk to the energy of the person, you can have a decent conversation without any fights. And then when you see them, they're almost programming because somehow they'll download that or it will be in their awareness, although it's unconscious awareness, but you will actually get on a lot better. better. So have conversations, clear your head, do it frequently to begin with. Um, use your worry basket at night, like really acknowledge everything. I acknowledge everything, but I take it out so I can sleep. A lot of things happen in our sleep. We regenerate, we energize, the brain restarts itself. Like literally it defragments, it puts itself back together again. And you need good sleep. If you can't sleep, you will wake up really tired and overwhelmed. Okay. Okay, everyone. Thank you for that. Hmm. Thank you for that. And I hope you'll join me next month on the 28th. You will get a reminder email. And again, come with questions, whatever, and, and we'll organize ourselves better so that we cover everyone. Are you happy with that? Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Very Thank much. you so much. Thank you, Sahar. Thank uh -huh. you. My Thank pleasure. you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Good night. Sahar, can I ask a question, please? Please, go ahead. I was just going to ask very quickly, are you able to share the recording because, you know, you, yeah, yeah. there's so I'll much to take in. I'll send you the link for sure. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, Thank you. Me, anyone, if you text me, I'll text you the exercise as well. I'm a lot faster on WhatsApp and I don't mind what time you text and I'll send you that exercise because I want you all to do it. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. For now. Bye.